Hello guys, welcome to my Musa guide. In this video, I'll be talking about the Musa skill build, how the 18th of May patch affects us, and to show you some stun lock combos that work with the current CC patch. With the recent patch notes, Musa and Meiwa has finally received the much needed balance to their dash ability. Before, Blader's dash in Korea had pretty much a Sork's iframe, only they could spam it without stamina. Our iframe on each dash got removed and turned the blader into a cabbage. With the recent patch, we have finally received the middle ground by introducing stamina costs to our chase, but with the addition of super armor every time we use it, which makes us take damage still, but gives us the much needed CC immunity. Some mooses may find the recent patch notes to be a nerf to our damage and mobility, but it has definitely improved the performance of mooses in mass PvP, which Black Desert was built around. This means no more getting accidentally killed because you hyperdrive dash into a wizard CC. Furthermore, they reduced the cooldown of Dragon Bite to 3 seconds, which is one of our main combo initiators. And lastly, they fixed the Moose's blooming Phantom ability. Before this patch, I didn't even spec into the skill due to the fact that the illusion hits were broken. Now it hits like a truck and has increased range. So before we talk about how Stunlock works with the Moose now, we need to talk about skill builds in order to maximize our DPS for our combos. Bear in mind this guide is for PvP only, and some skills may be great for PvE, but impractical for PvP. It's worth to note that the combos displayed in this video can also be used by the Meiwa. So the first skill is Slice. This is a low preference skill, since it's a skill we barely use and investing in it does not increase the damage of our other skills. Retaliation is a low preference skill due to its poor DPS scaling and the decapitation version has too much of a long animation to make use of as you can use other skills as soon as you land the counter. Divider is low preference, its scaling is decent and you may want to add the knockback into your CC combo, however I personally leave this at 1 as I rarely use it. Backstep Slash is medium preference, it's got great range and the CD reduction is quite significant, not to mention 50% slow and max rank is quite useful. Blind Thrust is a high preference, as the 30% crit buff at max rank is quite effective, and it's also our second stiff used in combos. Blind Slash is low preference, as we have stronger skills that inflict floating. Nemesis Slash is high preference, the heal gain on this is ridiculous, even when used on warriors and valkyries that are blocking. Mercer Spirit is low preference, the new patch has made this skill kinda less useful, as long as you have good stamina management, running out of willpower shouldn't be much of an issue. Whirlwind Cut is low preference, getting the ultimate to unlock a third stiff is not as practical due to the last hit taking too long to stiff and has average damage in PvP. Carver is low preference, we have stronger knockdowns and due to not being able to CC chain knockdowns in this patch, this skill is not worth ranking up. Chasing Kicks are low preference, I keep Roundhouse Kick in case I need to auto cancel my dash in emergencies or when I'm slowed. The Dragon Bite, Dragon Claw and Lunar Slash are high preference skills as it's our combo initiator and has very high damage. Gale is high preference, it's a very strong combo if you do the full 3 hit combo to utilize the flow damage modifier. Rising Storm is high preference as it's our strongest AoE ability. Getting ultimate Rising Storm helps with executing the skill faster after skills such as Gale. Tiger Blade is medium preference, I personally can't spare the skill points to get it and I only find it useful for situations when I'm out of stamina, since after the patch we are CC immune most of the time, even when we're not using Tiger Blade. For arrow skills, I only use Stub Arrow 2 and Charged Arrow. The others are too slow and just get in the way. Grappling is too slow to be useful in gap closing, and Evasive Shot doesn't stun. Both passives of Musa are high preference and quite useful. Sword Training increases our damage and Maneuver Training increases our evasion. Precise Martial Arts is also a high preference passive because it helps with landing our stiffs more often. When doing stunlock combos with Musa, it's worth to note that the more CC you chain together, the less chance it has of succeeding. Therefore, the combos that are the best are those that have the least CC chain but deal the most damage. So before I get into the combos, I want to provide some insight into the dynamics between each CC state in our current version of the game. At the moment, we are able to CC chain different states that alternate between our stiff and stun abilities. It's possible to chain the same CC state, such as two stuns after another, however the success rate is very low compared to using a different CC state. This means that creating a stun lock combo relies on alternating between our stuns and stiffs, 
Despite what the tooltip says, Dragon Bite is actually a stun like our blooming skill. The only downside is that due to the high stiff and stun resistance in the game, especially after the Valencia patch, the CC combos are not guaranteed and depends on which class you're trying to combo. For example, it's quite hard to land a full combo against a Musa with passive evasion and a stun resistant necklace, especially if you have not invested in accuracy. With that said, let's get into some stun lock combos that are possible. Currently, I use two skills to set up my combos, and it's worth to note that these combos are optimal with 5 attack speed and 5 crit. There is also a correlation between landing combos more often with more accuracy. In this video, I use a plus 15 black horn bow, and the players I'm stun locking all have plus 15 gear with resistances and have an average DP that range from 150 to 180. Blind Thrust, which starts you off with a 10 second crit buff, utilizes the CC in order to do even more damage to the back of a stun lock target. Landing Blind Thrust means Blooming Phantom will do extra damage on the back with an extra 30% crit buff applied and works great against players that stack knockdown resistance. For this combo you will need to use Backstep Slash after Blooming before you go into the full Dragon Bite combo, because if you skip or miss the stiffness from Backstep Slash, there is a low chance that the stun from Dragon Bite will continue the stun lock from Blooming, as CC chaining with the same CC state has a low chance of stun locking. Dragon Bite is the second combo initiator, and with the patch on the 18th of May, it has given us access to a stun every 3 seconds, meaning we can now pull off what I call a double Dragon Bite CC combo. This combo has a high number of CCs, meaning its success rate is lower than the other combos. However, it's a combo that's high risk, high reward, as it has consistently one comboed players with over 170 DP when it lands. This is one of the strongest combos I've currently used, but hopefully with this knowledge, Mooses are able to create their own personalized CC combo. Thank you for watching. My next few videos will show how these combos work in real PvP against other classes. If this has helped, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more upcoming guides.